Hey guys. sick so I'm not doing a cigar today but I want to try to keep up the pace on my videos so I thought since I've started this new series on uh, care to pair coffee and cigars I figured and I got a suggestion from Kevin about this as well over at Cigar Prop uh, to talk about coffee a little bit and the different brew methods and everything so what I'm gonna do is a little bit of um, Everything in this video is my opinion, my very strong opinion, and, uh, and my preferred method. So I'm, I'm only talking about stuff that I routinely do. Let's, uh, let's start with my personal preference and my, the methods that I do for brewing coffee uh, most frequently. Number one is espresso through my Rocket Giotto. You've seen my uh, Rocket machine at the, in the intro at the beginning of the video. Um, that is pretty high-end. Uh, in fact, f uh, from a consumer perspective, it's very high-end. Um, there's a 10-year story behind that. So that, that, that thing I use every single day, uh, except for obviously when I travel. Uh, and it is a very expensive machine. It's imported from Italy, um, and it is as high-quality espresso machine as, as it gets. Um, it's fairly simple. It doesn't have any automation. It's all manual. Um, uh, you know, there's some nuances, dual boiler, single boiler, all this kind of stuff. None of that really matters as much as, as just uh, having a good machine for uh, pulling espresso shots. So I typically drink, when I'm at home, I typically drink uh, cappuccinos or latte drinks. And basically that's... Uh, one or two shots of espresso in milk and what is the difference between latte and cappuccino cappuccinos think of as thirds a third coffee third milk third foam and you can have a wet or dry cappuccino that basically just means more or less foam and you and you subtract or add milk to make up for the difference a latte is just a milk drink a espresso milk drink uh, with steamed milk maybe a little bit of foam at the top uh, and then however many shots of espresso you want um, I drink quite a few flat whites now flat white really is somewhere between a latte and a cappuccino it's probably closer to a cappuccino and but the difference is in the espresso so in, when you're pulling an espresso shot there's you can pull a short shot, <clears throat> and I, I think that the thing mankind does best is overcomplicate things. And uh, I, I don't see a reason to complicate my my coffee more than more than my espresso machine already does. My first cup of coffee takes 11 minutes in the morning to make, uh, and I'm doing stuff that entire 11 minutes. So, anyways, back to a flat white. So, a flat white, when you pull the espresso shot, it's one shot of espresso and then a little bit of uh, steamed foamed milk. It, so it's, it's closer to a, a cappuccino, but when you pull the espresso shot, it's called a ristretto pull. And basically that just means that it's a short shot. You, you, you don't pull it for as long, uh, and it tends to give you a sweeter espresso, uh, slightly sweeter, and, and uh, it, it doesn't pull out or extract as many of the oils and stuff. So you get a little bit more um, palatable uh, milk drink, basically. Um, I drink plenty of straight espresso as well. It really depends on what coffee I'm doing. By the way, today I'm doing a coffee called um, Brazil Yellow Sweet. It is from, so my regular go-to coffee in, in the company that, that I buy coffee from year-round 
is a company in Phoenix called Lost Dutchman Roasters. Uh, Lost Dutchman does a fantastic job on their roasts. They, uh, they roast it themselves and they sell at very reasonable prices. I totally lost track of my thought. Lost my, uh, I went off the rails there, boys. Everyone now is charging just buttloads of money for their coffee. And that's one of the reasons why I like Lost Dutchman, because their coffee stands up to anybody uh, out there that I've tried. And basically, I buy it uh, by five pound bags, and it costs me around nine bucks a pound. Um, which is a very good price. A lot of stuff today you're going to pay anywhere from $15 to $23 a pound, depending on whose coffee you're buying. And some of the coffees that I'll be showing you uh, during this series, I've got one that's uh, 24 bucks for 8 ounces. So I talked about the espresso drinks, which are pulled with uh, a proper espresso machine. I have some uh, water on the boil right there. I'm getting ready to have coffee here in just a few minutes. Pour over. Uh, where to start? So you've got uh, you've got these you've got these kettles, uh, which is what I have for basically bringing your water to uh, boil. They've got the kind of long gooseneck on it. I'll I'll try to remember to put a picture in the video. Um, and those work best for doing a pour over, but you know, sometimes I just use a regular stainless uh, camping uh, coffee pot. Uh, as long as you can boil water and, and pour it easily, that's what you're looking for. <clears throat> now, what is wrong with me today? Guys, I'm sick. I'm sorry about this, but, and, and then yesterday I started getting sick and today I woke up just feeling like crap and I was like, dang it. I had a cigar planned and everything and didn't work out. Oh, my coffee's boiling. Here I thought I was being more organized and I'm, I'm, uh, I started my water too soon. So since my water is ready, let's talk about uh, this pour over that I'm about to make. So pour over is basically you have some kind of filter device and you uh, put your grounds in it and you pour the water over it and, and you brew the coffee that way. But basically you take... Um, uh, a, you can typically get them in brass, stainless steel, or uh, ceramic, and it's just a real fine mesh uh, filter. Now the thing with doing a pour over is if in I don't like a pour over straight through stainless steel. The reason why is because the stainless steel uh, doesn't retain or hold back the oils from the coffee as well as a paper filter does and so those oils uh, end up filtering into your cup and you can get a more bitter cup of coffee or something I, I typically just care more for a, a um, pour over that goes over a filter so I get these biodegradable paper filters and what you do is you take the filter and you want it to stay open it's just this cone thing right so you go against the fold there, you, you fold it the same way that it's already folded, but uh, the other way. So now you get, a, you get an, open, an open filter. Now, the best thing to do is to rinse your filter before you do your coffee. So let me grab my water and I'll rinse this filter. Now the reason why you want to rinse the filter is because there can be acids in the paper um, that you don't want in your coffee and also there might be uh, it, it w once you get it uh, saturated it'll hold open easier so yeah you just kind of rinse it and I, I don't even rinse it all the way to the top I just get everything that I'm gonna end up getting wet when I'm when I'm doing the coffee anyways so you you want to rinse the filter to get rid of those acids get it rid of uh, any debris or whatever and basically wash it down to the bottom and uh, wash wash it through and then you're just going to toss that water and then put in your coffee and and uh, start your your grounds now the big mistake that a lot of people make is they just start pouring uh, water over it and, and start brewing their coffee and the, the right thing to do, no matter what method you're doing, the right thing to do is to bloom the coffee. 
So we'll talk about blooming here in just a moment. I don't know if it's going to come out, but the, the cup, the water is kind of, it's a little bit brown. All right, the one thing I'm not going to do right now uh, that I always do, but because of the situation right now, I'm not doing it, is I preheat the mug. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Basically, now that we've rinsed our filter, I just ground this coffee uh, just before I came out here. So it's, it's fresh ground. The whole thing with measuring your coffee, uh, you know, 65 grams or 70 grams per liter of water, all that stuff, I don't, I don't do any of that. Like I said, I have done that before. I just do it to my taste. And uh, there's a whole science about that, why that's, uh, you know, you get the, the best and most perfect extraction and all this stuff, but whatever. All right, so we've got our we've got our coffee in there. So now we're going to do the bloom, and I'll talk about that while I'm doing it. All right, so you want to saturate the grounds first, all around, and and just give them a good saturation, just enough to saturate the grounds, and then you want to let it sit for a few minutes. Um, the reason why is because you're, you're brewing that coffee, you're allowing it to bloom, and, and bloom is basically when you pour a little bit of water on the coffee and it starts to saturate and it swells up, and, uh, and, and you start extracting those oils and, and the flavor out of the coffee. So you let that sit for a few minutes. I'll just hold on to this pot until I'm ready. And you're basically letting it roast a little bit before you start pouring your water through it. All right, I've got a nice bloom going there. I don't know if, uh, if you can see it there. Generally, you should do that for about three minutes or so, but I probably did not do it for three minutes just now. And then you're just going to pour over, making sure that you get everything covered. And what I do is I pour from the edges in. Uh, because as you pour, if you pour straight in the middle, the coffee is going, you're going to divot the coffee and it's going to rise up the walls of the, of the filter. Um, and, then you're, and then you're not getting a proper uh, brew of those grounds that are up along the wall. So I pour along the edges to keep everything settled down. And this method takes a little while. You got to let it, let it sit and do its thing. Okay, so we talked about pour over. We talked a little bit about AeroPress. So the AeroPress is similar to a uh, French press. That's the word I was trying to think of earlier. Uh, except for with the French press, you put the coffee uh, in the bottom of the container. Uh, you pour your water in. You fill it up so much. You sit. You let it. You let the coffee grounds sink to the bottom and stuff. And then you, and and then it's got a uh, a, a wire mesh filter basically that. Uh, it's on a plunger and you plunge it down and you plunge it slow it, it, it takes several minutes you plunge it down slow and it's supposed to give you just a, a different um, a, a different brew it, it takes longer and, and some people like French press uh, I don't care for French press too much I have French press sometimes when I travel um, but typically when I travel, I either go to a, a coffee shop and get an Americano. Now Americano is a black coffee, but it's made with uh, one or two espresso shots. They pull the shots and they pour those shots into hot water. So it's, it's an espresso shot in hot water and that's an Americano. And it's, it tends to be a more bold, more, uh, uh, more in your face sort of brew. Uh, or I'll drink just a straight cappuccino. When, when I travel, so the two things that I do when, when I travel is I, I look up the, the town that I'm going to be in. I, I try to figure out, do they have a good cigar lounge and do they have good coffee shops? And I map all that stuff out before I go to the town so I, that I know where I'm going in the mornings before I have to report in for work and, and all that stuff. Um, but the AeroPress, so the AeroPress is a, a plastic device and it's different in that, in that um, 
it's got a, a paper filter that's on the bottom and a little screw cap that screws onto the bottom. And you, similar to the French press, you, you uh, put the coffee grounds in and, and then you fill this plastic tube basically with hot water. Now you should do the same thing with French press, AeroPress, uh, espresso. With espresso, it's called in, uh, pre-infusion. But blooming your coffee is a necessity for all coffee methods. Because you're going to get the best, the best uh, flavor uh, and the most flavors out of the coffee. Okay, so the AeroPress has a plunger as well, but it, it has higher pressure than a French press does. And so, and there are ways that you can sort of cheat and use an AeroPress to pull an espresso shot. Basically, you, you, put the, uh, you put the bottom filter in like normal, you put your coffee on, and then you put another paper filter on top, and you tamp it down like you would with an espresso, and, and, uh, and then pour your water over it, let it brew, and then, and then press it. It doesn't make a true espresso uh, because you can't get high enough pressure. To pull a proper shot of espresso, you need nine bars of pressure. Nine bars is, I'll put, I'll put a note in the video. I can't remember off the top of my head how much like PSI that is or whatever, but uh, nine bars of pressure, and you're not gonna get that with that uh, arrow press. Uh, not very easily anyways. Okay, so methods that I haven't tried yet, but I want to. Uh, one is a method I just learned the other day called ice filtered. Now, uh, I think I mentioned, yeah, cold brew, cold brew. Oh, okay, let me finish the types of brews that I do. Nitro cold brew, which I always buy. Uh, you can set your own nitro brew system up, but it's, it's expensive and there's no reason to do it. I, I only drink nitro cold brew when I'm, when I'm traveling, and a nitro cold brew is cold brew coffee that's been infused with nitrogen, and, and basically it's pulled like a, a like a beer. In fact, a nitro cold, a nice nitro cold brew looks very similar to a Guinness uh, beer. It's got the same kind of head on it and, and all foamy and stuff. And the purpose of the nitrogen is it it really adds a creaminess to the coffee. It, it takes a regular iced coffee and makes it creamy if from a mouth consistency perspective almost like you've added cream to the to the uh, coffee or something nice I, I like this Lost Dutchman Brazil yellow sweet because it's got a it's got a smokiness to it that I've, I've gotten from other coffees before, but it's, it's a real nice balance in this particular coffee. And at the same time, it's got this, it, it's got this sort of weird sweetness, uh, hence the name, Brazil Yellow Sweet. It is a single origin coffee, meaning all the coffee came from a single farm uh, from a single country in Brazil. And um, it's just a really good coffee and it's, like nine bucks a pound. Ah, delicious. Okay, so nitro cold brew and then regular cold brew. And with regular cold brew, basically you're 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 putting you're putting coffee grounds, fresh ground coffee, into cold water and putting it in your fridge for most companies do it for 12 hours because they need to turn around and sell this stuff. Uh, I do it for 24 hours typically. Uh, but, but basically, cold brew, you'll always get, or you'll, you'll always get very similar, a very similar experience from cold brew. Uh, because what cold brew does is it, it kind of, it doesn't extract the acids and stuff of the coffee and the stuff that tends to make it more bitter and it will bring out more of the sweetness a lot of times. So typically with cold brews, you'll, or it's called toddy as well, you'll get a flavor that's, 
it's a thick coffee it's a concentrate so you can you can uh, pour it over milk or ice or something to, to water it down and and whatever but you'll get more of a chocolatey sort of sense from a cold brew coffee and a, a toddy machine basically it's again it's very similar uh, it different shape but the, the one I have is a, a cylinder of similar mesh very very fine mesh and I take this cylinder and I fill it up to the fill point with uh, coffee grounds uh, and then I set it down in the carafe that it's going to brew in and I, I pour cold water over that and then I put it in the fridge for 24 hours and it's brewing it's it's extracting those flavors and stuff and you get a very smooth very mild typically they're really good for ice drinks obviously because they're already cold but also because the coffee itself is going to be sweeter and, and have less of the acids which add to the bitter notes in, in coffee and stuff so a new method I learned about the other day is called ice filtering and it's similar to cold brew except you're using regular you're brewing uh, like pour over coffee like normal and then you're pouring it over ice and there's this whole I'm gonna have to learn it uh, I, I haven't done it yet I just learned about it the other day but basically you pour it over ice you let it sit for a little while and then you uh, uh, that ice melts and then you pour all of that over ice again to get your drink and it's supposed to be the flavor of the coffee is supposed to be truer to brewed coffee as opposed to cold brewed coffee uh, so you, you get more of the extraction and stuff because it makes sense because you're you're brewing the coffee with heat and getting those uh, oils and everything out uh, and the other method that I want to do myself I've had lots of these on the road before but I've never done it myself is Turkish coffee Turkish coffee is you gotta be you gotta have some hair on your chest guys to drink this stuff because it's basically uh, coarse coffee put into this little this little funky pot that's got a long arm that comes up and they they brew that pot over 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 flame and you put the coffee directly into the water and stuff and, and you let it brew for quite a while and and then you have to let it settle and everything and you pour it it's very very strong coffee um, I do like it 